Hello, my name is Jiyeon Kwon, Professor of Arts and Cultural Management at Hongyun University in Seoul, Korea. And I'm delighted to have with us today Director Yen Jun Wang of Jingdezhen Imperial Kiln Museum in China. He's here to tell us about an award-winning project for the Best in Heritage 2024. Welcome, Mr. Wang. Could you please briefly describe us, Jingdezhen Imperial Kiln Museum? Sure. Our institute has been doing archaeology, restoration, and the museum in Jingdezhen. So we are having three responsibilities. But we consider all these three as integral parts. That is, the museum is the institute. The institute is the museum. Now, what was the history of this award-winning museum, um, its objectives, rationale, and aims? We have been existing for about 35 years. So traditionally, we were a museum just displaying the ruins, the porcelain shards, and the history of the Imperial Kion factory, you know, which was one of the most important porcelain factory in the world. So to begin with the plan of the new space of our museum, we were thinking, you know, how could we um, do a better job in terms of uh, connecting time, space, and people with the porcelain with the ceramics. This site, this community has been producing porcelains for over a thousand years. So there's a vast amount of uh, uh, kiln workshops and also those historical uh, lanes and alleys. We So when we were considering this new construction of the museum, we think uh, how can we adapt it to the uh, key to the major characters of this community instead of uh, uh, standing out of it. Uh, so we try to immerse ourselves as part of this community. Now, what do you think were the particular qualities or innovations that impressed the CMA jury to award this, the most innovative museums in China in 2023? Can you tell us what kinds of innovations uh, you made? Yes, I think there are three most important characters. Number one is the compound of the remains and existing architecture. Number two, the visiting experience. Number three, the ceramic gene bank. All these three were put together to, to try to connect the time, space, and people. We'll talk about the, the ceramic gene bank later. So for the first two, it's like this. Um, through the archaeological work, we restored the, the porcelain shards, the, the porcelain items, but also we have been uh, able to show people the uh, those remains of the kilns, the workshops, the streets, um, uh, those stuff. So when people walk into this uh, museum, into the surrounded historical site, they can see the past. But meanwhile, they can also see the present. Uh, Jinuzhen is uh, uh, it's such a wonderful city that uh, the ceramic industry has been existed for more than a thousand years and it's, it's still alive. So nowadays there is still more than 100,000 craftsmen working in this industry, in this line. So they bring history into present. That's the how we, you know, make the best use of these remains and the architecture to give people that kind of a visiting experience. Now, can you also perhaps uh, share with us some of the difficulties or challenges that you faced during the realization of this project? Of course, uh, difficulties uh, always exist. So number one, the finance, all, all the, uh, the building, the exhibit, the um, projects, or take money. Uh, we can skip that, but uh, that's the fact. Number two, um, for any new ideas, new projects, new concepts, it takes efforts to be accepted. So um, fortunately, we formed up a strong team. You know, we archaeologists, we um, are together with uh, artists, with uh, 
architect and other uh, and also, as I said, the neighborhood uh, residents. We present the ideas together to the uh, to the people who you know who was empowered empowered to approve. So uh, that's important. That's 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 a difficulty and challenging, but fortunately, uh, we were well, so far so good. Now I was very impressed by the buildings of your museum, uh, the unique and distinctive architecture. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, you know, the design concept behind these uh, buildings, uh, what it represents, and uh, what the architect intended, and also the fact that he used uh, recycled bricks from the kilns. I think it's a very interesting point. Um, so, can you elaborate a little bit on this? Yes, that's uh, a good question. We position our museum as the borderless museum. So with the architect's help, we decide to build our museum, taking after the X-shape museum, X-shape kiln uh, of Jinnichen, which is uh, the very important invention uh, to the world, actually. Uh, talking about the X-shape kiln is uh, it's a uh, uh, it's a shape is like uh, uh, the upper half of a leg laying flat. So the one end is round, the other end is sh relatively sharp, and uh, one end lower and the other end higher with chimney. So that gives a, a very a good heat efficiency to fire the porcelains. And all the kilns are covered with red kiln bricks. And the kiln bricks is everywhere in Jinnichen. So our museum have eight arches in you know in the form of the the, the kiln arch and uh, and uh, with all kinds of the the uh, kiln bricks or recycled ones as the texture. So that um, really uh, helps us to uh, to attract uh, more visitors, more audiences coming to see this museum to take pictures outside, but also inside with our, our restored porcelains. Well, I also found uh, your community engagement with local residents and craftsmen and archaeologists uh, to organize joint uh, exhibitions to be a very impressive effort. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what kinds of exhibitions you organized and what was the response of the audience who came to see it? and the outcome of the uh, of the exhibition results? Yeah, I can give you an example uh, about our, a recent exhibit we had. It's called The Mystery of Blue and White. It's about the blue and white porcelains. So um, in addition to, to those uh, excavated and restored remains and porcelain shards, we also invited the local pres uh, residents and also the uh, outside artists to join this uh, exhibit. The artists from all over the world submitted their proposals and 11 of them were selected and they invited here to have a seven day camp to learn the Imperial Kion factory, the history, the remains, and even our ceramic gene bank in depth. And then together with us, we finalize those ideas and carry them out. And so the neighborhood residents, they were also invited either through their uh, regular works as part of the exhibit or invited as a narrator uh, or tour guide to this exhibit. Now, you also mentioned the gene bank, which sounds like a lot of work uh, to put together, but a great resource for uh, ceramic research, as well as future studies, and also for contemporary artisans to draw inspiration from. And I'm wondering how uh, how much has been accessed by the general public? And is this accessible for the audience abroad, for example? Yeah, just like human beings, the outlook, the color, the body of the ceramics are also dependent upon their genes. That is the material, the way it was processed, and also the fire, the way the way it was fired. So based on the 
uh, accumulation of more than 20 million pieces of uh, porcelain shards and other specimen, we have this bank. And uh, based on the physical bank, we have the database, which has all the information like the body, the shape, uh, the glaze, the color, the stamps, uh, all those things. The identity database are certainly open to everyone based on uh, some orders, some rules, of course. Uh, but the most important principle is the more you contribute, the more you can get. So we, for example, we are connected with many museums and other um, the archaeological institutes. Uh, we are, are co-building this and co-sharing this. And to expedite the uh, processing of this bank, we are we also even invented uh, a new robot with uh, Fudan University in China to um, that gives us a, a much uh, high efficiency to do the uh, the physical specimen. And uh, for the database, we are also bringing a artificial intelligence to make the better use of it. One more thing is when we were talking about connection with time, space, and the people, we meant it not just to the this museum, this, this neighborhood, but also to the city, to the country, and even to the world. Because in the history, that was like so. Uh, the ceramics were traded, the, the techniques were transferred, were exchanged, in the ancient times. So that's our common history, that's our common memory. And they, nowadays, we can co-share it, and not just in the display of the museum, not just in the exhibit, but also can be in modern applications. Now, thank you for being with us today, Mr. Wang, to share your valuable insights on the Jingdezhen Imperial Kill Museum. And I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you.